before you once again to deliver this short message. If you would, be turning to the uh, book of 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Second Corinthians chapter 12, I'd like to read verses 5 through 10 at this time. <clears throat> Paul speaking here says, Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will glory not, but in, mine, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Now granted, just a casual reading of that verse might bring about some confusion. How is strength made better in weakness that almost doesn't make any sense but obviously there's more to it than that I'd like to take the next few moments to kind of study this idea out from this passage we can note a few things first and foremost is that we all have weaknesses and they're not the same weaknesses each of us more likely has a different weakness than someone else. Different things that might tempt us in different ways than, say, our brother or sister in Christ. We are all unique. I was told that one time, you're unique just like everyone else. But each of us has our own set of skills and our own set of weaknesses. And this is something that we must acknowledge if we're ever going to progress and grow up in the gospel. We must, with this in mind, put our life in God's hands and to make our will after His will. Now these temptations ultimately, as we go through them, bring about our own patience, our ability to bear up under persecution and future trials. And Paul recognized that. He was thankful for such things because it allowed him to become stronger and really get to the heart of what we're dealing with and that's casting his cares on Christ and relying on him more frequently. Secondly, these weaknesses serve to keep us humble. I think that's one aspect, one virtue that we as a nation and really the world throughout has, has seemed to have kind of lost. We're, we're boasting about boasting. We're not really as humble as we need to be. Now, if you've ever been on a team, any kind of organized team, you've seen this concept. Wherever I lack in a certain position, my teammate can make up for it, and vice versa. Now, if I'm not playing my position as I should, the coach is going to gripe at me. In fact, I've had all sorts of yellings and gripings from coaches because, well, Palooka, you just missed the block. Well, now our quarterback just got hit really hard. <coughs> Thankfully, it wasn't up to me. It wasn't my fault, but I had a teammate get hit so hard it knocked some of his teeth out. And, uh, but we won the game. <laughs> There's always a silver lining, I guess. But uh, wherever I am lacking, if you're on a team, someone else is more than likely going to be able to pick up your slack. Um really seen in our singing 
whenever we sing, if you're like me and you don't sing very well, if you look at the, the physics of it, there's gaps in the waves, the frequencies. And this is actually why we sing so well in the shower. If you sing in the shower, you sound amazing, and you get out, and why do I not sound as good anymore? It's because when you're singing in that square or rectangular size room, however big your shower is, those waves that you're producing are bouncing off the walls. And they're filling in the gaps that your voice naturally has. Therefore, you sound better. Now, even with that, I still don't sound that great, so I don't sing in the shower. But it's that sort of help that I'm talking about. As a team, we're able to help each other. And ultimately, leaning on our older brother, and that is Jesus Christ. We can see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. We won't read that, but after dealing with the spiritual gifts that were given, he starts discussing uh, members of the body, of the human body, and how the fingers and the hands and the feet and the head, they all have their own function. But even though certain body or body parts have more glory, if you will, they would still be nothing without all the other pieces. Who wants to be called a foot? But right now I'm standing on my feet. My feet are very important. When you stub your toe, your whole body hurts. But it's just a small member. But every member contributes to how the body functions. And he relates that back to the church. No matter how small we are, how large, we can provide necessary function. And that's really how it should be. But these weaknesses that we possess should further our dependence upon Christ. In John chapter 6, I would like to read a portion of that chapter. John chapter 6, verse 31. He's conversing with an audience here. It says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth his life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am that bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you, That ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, But the will of him that has sent me. The idea here is, is we obviously need sustenance. We need food. We need drink. Spiritually speaking, we need the same. Jesus supplies for our need. Jesus supplies for our weakness. Now, I will say, this is not a ticket for doing wrong. This is not a free pass to commit sin. But this is allowing for our development as Christians. Basically following in Jesus' footsteps and, and being more like Him with our daily life. Jesus has the ability to sustain us. He is that bread of life. And third, it points out the fact that we cannot save ourselves. The best that we can do, that we can ever do, is bring about death. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, we cannot originate a way to save ourselves. That must or is dependent upon a higher power. We know that higher power to be Jehovah God. Now Jesus has indeed solved the sin problem for us. This is not something we have to really concern ourselves with. As long as we're obedient to His will, God will take care of the rest. It is the blood of Christ that washes our sins away. And is the act of baptism in which we contact that blood, is saving blood. 
And then later on, as we typically refer to it as, is the second law of pardon, we contacted again as a Christian to have our sins removed once again, once we remit, once we repent. Now, when we, when we become a Christian, we become a member of something much bigger than ourselves. We're part of the body of the saved. And that's not just one assembly. That's a worldwide saved body. There are members of the church that we will probably never meet. You know, we, we've been praying for our members, our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, even Russia, and now even Israel. Those areas, we're probably never going to meet those Christians. However, if we're faithful, if they're faithful, and we die in the Lord, we'll be able to meet them one day in heaven and serve God eternally. If we're all faithful, Revelation 2.10, as we sang moments ago, when all of God's singers get home. We are pilgrims. We must not fall in love with the campground. <laughs> But we also must realize that as Paul had to learn the hard way that we do have weakness and that the grace of Christ is sufficient for us. We might not like that at times. We might think we need more. But our weakness shows Christ's strength because it shows that we need him. And it forces us almost to rely more on him to accomplish the different things that we must accomplish. You think of public speaking. I remember when I first gave at least a little bit of a speech. I was in high school. And I had to pick a topic and I chose Chinese dragons. I like dragons. And I had my little note cards and I never looked up. I don't remember how long that speech was, but it was just barely enough to get a, a good grade. I never looked up, so I don't know if anybody ever heard me, but I at least presented a speech. And then by the time I got up to fish hatchery for college, I had to start giving devotionals. They didn't tell me, they just put my name on the, the sheet for next speakers. That's how I learned I had the next devotional. My weakness turned into something better. Now, I'm not saying I'm a grand speaker. Far from it. But I'm a lot further away from when I gave that little talk about Chinese dragons. I can actually look at y'all instead of doing this. So we all have weakness. I've got plenty of other weaknesses. Just ask Lauren. But the point is, each of us as Christians, we're still human. But the point is, is we need to continue to grow and develop. And we must never forget that we have our elder brother Jesus to help guide us through this life. And ultimately, we will be with him in heaven. And, you know, today is New Year's Eve. I'm not really a proponent of making resolutions. Because if you're going to be a Christian and you're going to resolve to do things, it needs to be as quickly as you find out you need to do it. Don't wait six months. Don't wait for New Year's to do it. But if there ever was a resolution to make, why not intend to be a stronger Christian throughout this upcoming year? Why not intend to resolve yourselves, myself included, to be more faithful to God? We've got all year, assuming the Lord doesn't come back first, or if we die, who knows? Why not use the time we've got in best service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Now, if you need to render obedience to the gospel by either becoming a Christian or confessing fault, needing prayers of the congregation, please let it be known as together we stand and sing.